Hi, this is Brad Linder with Lilliputing, and this is a little computer from GPD called the GPD WinMax. Now, I say little, it's actually going to be one of the largest computers from GPD to date, but with just an 8-inch display, it's uh, still pretty small compared with a typical laptop computer. And it's really designed to be a handheld computer because in addition to working like a laptop, it, uh, it has built-in game control buttons so that you can use it to play video games. So I'm gonna just do a quick unboxing and I'll be back a little bit later with more details. But I wanted to sort of show what this upcoming little laptop looks like, what comes in the box and how it compares to a couple of other devices. So, this is going to go up for pre-order through a crowdfunding campaign set to begin on May 18th, and it's going to sell for $7.79 during crowdfunding. It'll cost a little bit more probably after the crowdfunding campaign is done. But the uh, the packaging here on this pre-release unit that GPT loaned me uh, is pretty much what you'll see. So go ahead and open up the box, and you can see here, again, it's... Fairly large compared with some other mini PCs. I have here a Picago with a seven inch screen and you can see that the uh, the Win Max is substantially larger. Uh, might have to take it out of the box to really see that. It's also a little bit thicker. So Picago again in the front with a seven inch screen versus the eight inch Win Max in the back. But the Win Max is gonna have a larger keyboard, a larger display, those built-in game control buttons and so forth. Um, I'm just gonna set it aside real quick and show you what else comes in the box. We've got here a little instruction manual. Sixty-five watt power adapter, USB type C. And the USB cable. That seems to be all that's there. And that's pretty much it. So let's just set that aside and take a look at the computer itself. So again, this is pre-release hardware, so there's a possibility that uh, there might be some problems, but for the most part, this is what you're going to get. So we've actually got a full-size Ethernet jack, micro SD card reader, full-size HDMI, two full-size USB Type A, USB 3.0 ports two USB Type-C ports, and a switch on the side, which is for toggling mouse mode or game controller mode. So I'll show you that in a moment. I also wanted to confirm that yes, one of these is actually a Thunderbolt 3 port, so you should be able to use it with external graphics, among other things. Uh, we've also got these shoulder buttons, so that if you're holding it like a gaming system, you can play. We've got a couple of status LEDs on the top. A uh, fairly noticeable ventilation system here uh, with intake and out. And if we open it up, you can see that it does indeed look sort of like a laptop. It's actually got a pretty decent keyboard that seems like it should be easy to touch type on. Yeah, no, I really like the spacing of the keys there. There are a couple of weird things about it, though. You'll notice that the uh, number keys are actually only sort of half height here, uh, and then the function keys are above them. So we've got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six rows of keys, but that top one, these keys are really two for, uh, for what you would expect from a full-size one normally here. Uh, in the bottom right-hand corner, we've got the arrow keys. Again, sort of half height up and down, and full-size left and right. But overall, the layout seems pretty good. Uh, once I start actually using it, we'll see how that actually holds up. Uh, caps lock key is sort of half size here. The tab is, um, eh, I guess it's not the worst position, but it's sort of just above the queue instead of off to the side here. Um, we've got just a single alt button, it looks like, but we've got shift keys on both sides. So that's a look at those features. Uh, I just noticed we've also got a mic and a headset jack here on the front. And then, of course, these game control buttons. Uh, the analog sticks, I don't know, they feel a little bit on the small side to me. And the D-pad is also kind of small. So the idea is that you can really sort of hold it, you know, put it on your lap, put it on a table, do some real typing. You can do gaming that way. Or for games that require controllers, you can just pick it up and play like that. Now, there's also a touchpad above the keyboard, because obviously you'd need a larger device to fit it beneath. Um, 
So as opposed to other sort of portable computers that you might want to use with games, you might have to attach uh, detachable controllers or you might have to use a plug-in controller or a wireless controller. This has them built in, which means that you're really going to have them with you all the time. So there's no mistaking this for anything other than a machine that's meant for gaming. In terms of hardware, it's got a 8-inch 1280 by 800 pixel display. It has an Intel Core i5 1035G7 Ice Lake processor with Iris Plus graphics. And it's uh, got 16 gigs of RAM, 512 gigs of storage, Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth 5, and uh, that HDMI port that I showed you before is an HDMI 2.0B port. It's got a 57 watt uh, battery. Power button up here, select Xbox and start buttons. Let's see if we can power it up. And uh, just for comparison here, again, I'm gonna bring up that PicoGo so you can see a seven inch device next to this eight inch device. Obviously, uh, touch screen display. Obviously this is a much larger device, but it's still pretty small by typical laptop standards. Let me see if I can find the mute button. Uh, now this is pre-release hardware, so we've got the little activate windows, go to settings to activate. Uh, that's probably something that you're not gonna experience if you buy the uh, retail version. Uh, it's possible that this might activate after I've got it set up, but I'm not entirely sure yet. Um, while we're doing size comparisons, I'll also show you another computer that is small, but not as small. If I can move a couple of things around here. We've got a Dell XPS 13, which is a thin and light laptop with a 13 inch display. You can see that it's thinner, but larger. So that's the sort of size difference that you're looking at between a 13.4 inch laptop with thin bezels. This one's a little bit chunkier, uh, but it is obviously a smaller device and something that's gonna be a little bit more comfortable to hold in your hands, I think. Uh, let's see if we can get through this quickly. Yeah, those small number keys do take a little while to get used to. While it's connecting to the network, again, just another little comparison here. Now the PicoGo is something I haven't actually reviewed because this is also pre-release, um, but it's a uh, device that only has an Intel Atom X5 Cherry Trail processor. It's really pretty sluggish, doesn't get great battery life, performance isn't great. So uh, PicoGo, when they loaned it to me, they uh, or they sent it to me, um, they told me that um, Yep, let's try this again. Uh, that I should hang on to it and that they would send me one of the upgraded versions at some point, which they have yet to do. And it's not entirely clear to me how that crowdfunding campaign is going. So that's the reason I haven't actually reviewed this, but it's nice for size comparisons. Uh, it might take me a little bit longer than I'm anticipating here to connect to the internet here. This is one of the reasons that I don't typically do unboxing videos, but I know that this is a, a computer a lot of people wanted to know about, so I figured I would get to start right away before I've had time to start playing with it. So uh, if this doesn't connect soon, I might just shut off this video and uh, come back with more details later. It weighs about 1.8 pounds. It has active cooling. You saw the ventilation on the bottom. Uh, it's got two fans and two heat pipes under the hood. And for some reason, maybe the caps lock is on. Ah, here we go. Caps lock was on. <laughs> that's all that's happening. Um, all right, so now it's uh, it's going through these uh, setup. Keyboard is back lit. Now let's see what's new from Windows. So I can turn on and off the backlights there. I don't know how well that comes across in this video. Let's 
green brightness can be adjusted. And I'm just gonna log in with my two-factor authentication. Give me a second here. Create a pin. Now I will say part of the reason it took me longer than I expected just to type in a password a moment ago is that those little number keys are really pretty small. So if you are going to use this primarily for gaming, uh, anything that requires a lot of text entry, text I think is fine, numbers might be a little bit trickier. And now another thing I should point out here is that while this has a 10th generation Intel Core i5 Ice Lake processor, it also has, uh, it's set to 25 watts. So that's a 15 watt processor normally, but it can be configured upward. And in this case, it is configured for 25 watts. You can adjust that in the, uh, the BIOS, I understand. So you should be able to hit delete during boot up to get into the BIOS and adjust the voltage. So if you want to prioritize uh, battery life and performance stability, you can do that. If you want to prioritize speed, you can do that as well. I don't know if you can hear this but the fans are kicking in a little bit. And while we're at it, I'll also show you if I flick that switch, I think I should be able to make a mouse move. No? No, not seeing any mouse cursors move. I guess I'll play around with that at a future time. So anyways, this is the basic uh, unboxing, setup, first look experience. Uh, this is the GPD Win Max, which uh, is a $779 and up during crowdfunding. Mini PC should be shipping in uh, late June, early July to backers of a crowdfunding campaign set to begin on May 18th. It's a 1.8 pound handheld computer. It's really too large to slide into a pocket, so it's not exactly part of one of uh, GPD's pocket line of devices, but oh, here we go. There we go. I've got a mouse cursor working, and if I flip this switch, there we go. Now I can move the cursor this way as well. Do any of these buttons do anything? No, I guess not. And let's dim the screen a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. There we go, left button. So you can navigate using the gaming buttons even if you're not using it for gaming, as well as using the touchpad, which again, you have to reach up over the top of the screen to do that. Um, this is the GPD Win. Oop. Max, stay tuned to Lilliputing for more details coming soon.